I need to know everything Who and the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying But act like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George I hop in the Porsche Five and a horse I'm ready for war I'm coming for And we are live And we're, we're not actually live I said that last time <laughs> <We're> <laughs> but I, I always say we're live We're never fucking live, right? Um, but I'm so happy to be here Because Alan, you're joining us Again, I think in the last yep. one Oh no, you were here in the last one. Oh yeah well, Before that you were gone And, and we missed you uh, today I, in the, I missed you too. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> today <laughs> in the podcast, guys, we have uh, Mike Burns. Mike Burns uh, with Burns Team. Burns Team, man. Burns Team. There we go. Uh, Burns Team. Mike, Mike Burns is a, a uh, real estate investor, and I want to know way more about you because I know you're not just local. I see you flying. You're moving around the country. You're picking up properties everywhere. The legend. The legend. The legend. <laughs> we have a legend here. <laughs> the legend. I love, dude. I fucking love it, man. Right. And I always see your post, and this is the first time we've met. It's pretty funny because we always talk for yeah. months now, and I'm always liking the stuff and engaging with the yeah. stuff. And I'm just like, dude, we got to get him on the podcast. So yeah. I'm super happy to have you here, bro. No, dude, I'm pumped to be here. I appreciate you guys reaching out. It's crazy about social media. There's a lot of people that you know, like just me and you interacting, and then. Yeah. Uh, Never met them, and then uh, you meet up with them. So it's kind of it's kind of it's cool the reach that gives yeah. you. But yeah, no, we're uh, we just so we just closed on um, a forty unit deal in Texas. So we've been working on moving into the apartment space too. So that was some of the flying around I've been doing. But um, yeah, man, we're flipping houses. We got a rental portfolio here in Utah. Um, our mortgage brokerage has been open for about a month, and then uh, the real estate brokerage should be launching hopefully tomorrow. We should have licensing back and approved. <laughs> oh. Dude, that's a big deal. You're making big Dude, moves, that's a man. big deal. So how old are you, bro? 33. 30, you're my age. We're the same age. I look like 50, though, because my fucking gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's cool. No, I mean, I do feel like I'm, I'm kind of going... So I started dropping weight recently, and I, I do feel like I'm looking a lot younger, even with the 30 pounds I, I took off. you know. And I saw that y you went through a, a weight loss transformation, too, very recently, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, dude, you'll see it in the face, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. you know? I think we all did. Oh, you did yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're you went backwards in time. Yeah. My mom couldn't even recognize me, man. I dropped like forty pounds. Oh, really? Yeah. About what, like two years ago. That's awesome. So dude. I get it. Yeah. You dropped forty pounds. You, your hair started growing back out of nowhere. I don't it know how. Grew that back happened. out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you still got the scar on the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this dude actually got the surgery. He he went through and got the hair restoration surgery. Oh yeah, man. Oh, for real? Yeah. I looked at my dad and my brother, and I'm like, I'm not trying to go bald. Fuck that. Yeah. Oh, how old are you? Uh, 30. 30? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 30 years old and got it done. That's, That's good. Now I'm good. Yeah, I would have never known. I didn't even know. Yeah, that. nobody knows. I'm try to get closer to you there just so I can get the right audio on. up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, one of the reasons why I want to get you on the podcast, obviously, we want to learn more about you, right? This is an entrepreneur podcast. We love entrepreneurs. We like to uh, engage with them and get their story out. All entrepreneurs I've met in the past have a fucking badass story, right? They have an awesome story. And, uh, I mean, I don't even know your story from the past, but dude, like, like I said, I heard about you, um, kind of on accident when I was just looking at other teams at the brokerage we were at before. And I saw a video of you. And I told you about it recently. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh shit, this guy's like, he's a real estate agent. And then I find out you're not, I mean, you are a real estate agent, but you don't, you're not prospecting real estate, right? You're kind of just doing your own thing. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we got the retail side, but me personally, I'll, I'll do listings, you know, listing appointments if I need to, but I'm pretty much focused on the investing side. And then you know, we'll get the brokerage going. I got a team, you know, so I got a few agents on our real estate team. And then we've got uh, three people on the mortgage side. So I'm just focusing on growing that business yeah. out. And then the investing is really where I'm at. Like at heart, I'm an investor. That's what I love. Yeah. So talk to me about how that started, man. Like, what got you into it? What did you do before? I mean, what, what, when you were younger, what did you do? I want to get that story. All right. All right. <laughs> so I'll take you quick. So I grew up in a small town called Tehachapi, California. It's about an hour and a half, maybe two hours north of L.A., it's a lot like Heber or Tooele, um, you know, like in Southern Cal, it's like the top part of Southern California. So they think, you know, they think it's the mountains, but really it's just a high desert. So I grew up there, maybe like I had to drive 25 minutes to get to school, you know, one junior high, one high school. I think my graduating class was maybe like 250 kids. So small town, but my parents owned a business. They had a, like a garden center, nursery, landscape company. So I grew up around that, and that was awesome um, growing up in a small family-run business because, I mean, you can't, can't ask for a better, you know, um, just exposure to business yeah. and values and all that. So I uh, grew up doing that, and then um, when I was uh, 18, graduated, bounced that town immediately. I went to Bakersfield, California to go to college, and, uh, dude, I lasted like two weeks. 
So <laughs> <laughs> didn't we all? I lasted one semester. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was I was enrolled for a semester, and then um, I ended up getting caught not going to class because I moved down there. It was about an hour away. But uh, my car got broken into, so I called my mom, told her what was going on. She was like, well, shouldn't you have been in class like at, around that time? And I was like, well, about that. I haven't been going, you know. So um, so I was in Bakersfield trying to figure out what I was going to do. So then I ended up moving up to Oregon, and I was going to start my own little nursery, you know, garden center up there. My parents had bought property up there, moved up there. And then um, I got in the wholesale side of that business, and I was doing inside sales and just kicked ass at it, man. I was uh, – I was like 19 years old. I had a $2 million sales quota and set a company record at a place that had been around for like 100 years and was just uh, kind of found that sales was my thing and I saw the money opportunity there. So um, I did inside sales for them for two years, kind of supporting outside guys that were outside uh, sales reps. Yeah. But I'd be calling and servicing their their cut their clients and, and, you know, doing my own sales and shit too. And then I didn't uh, – I was waiting around, waiting around, and then a territory finally popped up in eastern Washington, and I applied for it, and they gave it to some dude that had been with the company for, like, four years, and I smoked him in sales. Like, I was, like, more than double the amount of sales he did, but they gave it to him, and I was like, fuck you guys, I'm out. So then I just made a deal with two big nurseries in Oregon. Um, they gave me exclusive rights to sell their shit um, in western Canada. So I had British Columbia and Alberta, and then, like, eight states in the western U.S., um, so I started that from scratch, broke up with a girl I was with for like three and a half years. And uh, me and my brother said, fuck it, and moved to Salt Lake. And, um, you know, so we were in Utah doing our thing. And then I was uh, I was on the road like probably six months out of the year just traveling a lot, sleeping in my car, you know, like just hustling. I had 10% commission. They gave me like a $2,000 a month draw, no customers. I was starting from scratch, you know. So I was out there hustling. And then um, I was probably four years into that, built that territory up to about – 750,000 in sales. And uh, my brother hit me up one weekend and was like, Hey, are you, are you going to be around this weekend? Um, there's a free house flipping workshop. Do you want to, you want to go to it? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Is it one of those like Armando Montalongo ones? Or? Dude, it was, it was, so it was Dean Graziosi. Oh, okay. We signed up and then the sales guy just totally lied to us about a bunch of shit. So we actually ended up getting our money back. The sales dude got fired because he told us we'd be meeting with Dean in Lehigh at their offices down there. And then that obviously didn't happen. Yeah. So that was, we kind of fell flat on that. And then maybe two months later, Armando rolled around. He kind of looked like Armando. I know. He does. <laughs> I got to get, I, I'm going to get him on the podcast, right? No, you need to. I'm you going to. to. And, and we've actually talked a little bit on social media. Like he's oh, responded and went back and forth. Is he still flipping houses in Texas? Or I think he, he just does the big massive call centers. And I'm sure her, her, he'll correct me on this later on. But I think that's pretty much what he's doing is the call centers, finding deals, you know. I don't know if he's using his money or hard money or whatever he is to acquire the properties. And I know he's still doing the coaching stuff. Okay. Um, but that guy is a beast, man. And I used to get that when I was a kid. Like, back in the day when I was in hair school, they're like, what the hell? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> stop. I thought the same thing, man. <laughs> yeah, like, that's twins. funny. Funny story. Alan and I flipped our first house together th th this last summer. Uh-huh. And <laughs> one of the contractors we used, he was through a friend of ours. I guess the contractor we were kind of messing with, like, he was helping us. He wasn't really our contractor. Um, but he was helping us find subs. And uh, one of the subs thought I was him. And I was like, this guy shows me so much respect. Like, oh, every time I'm there. <laughs> and, then, and then someone broke the news to him, like, months after that I wasn't him. And I was still using him. And he's like, dude, I thought you were him. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't kissing the ring no more after that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because he dropped an appointment. I sent him. So you're right. He definitely was not kissing the he ring did. anymore. He just He dipped. Yeah, he just dropped the he appointment. He never showed up. Yeah. His dreams of being on TV just, <laughs> just <laughs> fell flat. It fell flat. But you know what's funny is, is we connect that way because I used to be in the in the, the landscaping business when I was a kid. Oh, really? Like 14 to 16. And I wanted to open a nursery. I worked for Cottonwood Landscaping. And, okay. And uh, we, was, we would do multi-million dollar water features and waterfalls at, like all over the state. And, and I was getting paid like shit money. It was cash under the table. And I'm like, dude, I have a social security number. Why am I acting like I don't have one? You know what, you know what I mean? But I, but I did that and I saw the amount of money. We were in Heber City. We built a half a million dollar waterfall and it was like a, like a lake we dug out. And I was a machine operator. We were placing the rocks yeah. and doing everything and putting the pond liner. And I'm like, man, this is like, this, this thing has to cost so much money. And I was 16 at the time when I found out what the bill was. I'm making like $8 an hour cash. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not yeah. doing this, you know, this slave labor and getting $8 an hour cash. The owner's getting half a mil. And so I walked away, and that's when I was really like, dude, I got to walk away and figure out how to open a landscaping company. And I never did, but that's what I wanted to do for the longest time, you know. It's hard work, dude. It is hard work. But it's, you know, 
that was one cool thing for me growing up, you know, where you have the manual labor part, but then also being, you know, around a small family run business. It was just, I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better foundation. But yeah, dude, that's tough work. It's, you know, on the garden center side, you know, it's weather dependent. You know, if you, you have, if you don't got good weather in the spring, you're fucked for the rest of the year. You can't really catch up. It's uh, so I grew up, you know, it's kind of a high, it's a high stress. Um, and then you're dealing with perishable items, you know. Um, we dealt with that with the Browning property. Oh, dude, we lived there, watering the lawn oh, twice a day. God. Like oh, we were going dude. back and forth. One day he would be there, one day I'd be there. Well, we we, we were being cheap asses, and we didn't want. And we talked to this at, at the beginning. We talked about it. Yeah. We said, "Hey, do we put in a sprinkler system?" And I'm like, "I know we're going to be regretting this later on, hand watering yeah. this lawn every we day for like sixty days, and we did <laughs> for like two months straight, watering the lawn every day." Dude, I've <laughs> spent hundreds of hours probably watering grass, pissed at myself the whole time. You know, you dumb motherfucker, you could pay someone. Eight bucks, ten bucks an hour to be doing this shit. You're trying to run a uh-huh. million dollar Never company, again. Yeah. Never again. Yeah, no, we'll never do that again. But so, it's tough, man, because you're, you know, when you're flipping, you're buying a distressed property. The landscape looks like shit, and you got that. You have to water it, you know, uh, twice a day. Well, it went from literally putting carpet in one room to going. Maybe we should paint it a little bit. Maybe we should put a new kitchen. Maybe we should do the whole thing. Yeah, all new plumbing in the house, new maybe, electrical. New <laughs> it went from the carpet to. <laughs> Full gut job uh-huh. and landscaping too. Yeah, did you make money on it? We did. We made yeah. money on it, but the time wasn't worth it when it comes oh, down yeah. to it. Like, oh. we won't do that again next time. Just wholesale yeah. it out. Just call. Just call Burns, man. There you go. I'll take it off your hands. There you go. <laughs> so, let's go to where we saw the video. I saw the video of you at. I think were you with C twenty one at all? Is that what you were doing, or were you just hanging out over there? No. So, would um, I was at Century Twenty One for for a little bit for a few years. So, Chris Martindale. So I've always, flipping was my foundation where I started in real estate and then everything else kind of came from that, getting a license just cause. But, um, so probably in 2000, maybe 13 or 14, I was at C21 for maybe a year and a half, a year. I was on Chris Martindale's team as a buyer's agent, kind of figuring out the whole retail thing. And if I wanted to do that and I was doing my flips. So I was over there for probably a year, maybe, yeah. maybe a year and a half. You built a pretty good foundation with your flips though, man. Like when I see your stories on on social media, you have multiple flips going on at the same time. And it's like every day, every day. Yeah. We're usually rolling, you know, 10 to 15 at a time in in any given stage, whether we just bought them or it's full fledged rehab, or maybe it's on the back end listed, but that's, I think right now we got 11 going. Um, But with, with investing, I think you have such a more, you're you're so much more well-rounded than your traditional agent because you got to know so much more shit, you know, like, um, you know, the creative financing, learning seller, fin- like learning how to put deals together that's not black and white. Okay, I'm a buyer. I'm offering you 300, you know, the basic just following the rep C stuff. You kind of got to think outside the box and the negotiating is a lot different. So I think just as an investor, then you're you're learning, okay, well, you know, this is, you got, you really got to learn how to, pro- you know, value property because you're putting your name, you know, your money on that. What's it going to be worth back end? Then one one big thing that I think investors have an advantage over a regular agent is most agents don't know shit about a fucking house. They don't know they don't know anything about it. What you know, like what's two what's a two twenty outlet? That's so true. when so when you're an investor and you're going through, you're actually learning the construction side. You know what marble versus granite versus formica is, or you know what's the, all the different stuff. You know, um, so that really helped me in my retail business as an agent because I'm out there and I can talk to people like, oh hey, well you know you guys could take this wall out and you could get the closet. So that, that way you guys are having what you need. Or I know you guys don't like the kitchen, but it only costs 3,500 bucks to redo those countertops and put some new faces on, you know, the cabinets or whatever. So I think, um, that just all really helped. And then all the creative outside the box stuff too. Well, but by doing that, you're able to add a lot of value to your clients at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Well, and, and, and they, especially if you're working leads and you uh-huh. know, you're just some dude that's meeting them for the first time when you can roll in and start talking to them about shit it just makes you gives you It'll so much more. It'll just set you that far, that much apart from yeah. other, from, yeah. from another from another agent. A lot yeah. more credibility and and mm-hmm. with HGTV being so cool, you know, all these people they think they want to flip a house or do that. You know, house hacking is such a cool idea everyone talks about. So um, that all really helped out a bunch. Yeah. We get that a lot on the phones because Alan and I, you know, we have a, we have a buyers team and they they do listings too, right? Yeah. Um, but our agents for the most part they're get, they're getting these leads that come in and when they, when the, when the leads come in, it's so funny because. People are like, oh, uh, yeah, so I'm looking to pick up a, rent, a couple rental properties. And, you know, they're 
we sit there and listen to the caller. We'll talk to the agent and coach them through how to find out if they're actually a real investor. Because a lot of times they are watching HGTV or some of these mm-hmm. flip this house shows and they all of a sudden think, oh, I'm a real estate investor. I'm going to look for properties. And we talk to them. We start asking them questions and they don't know the answers to. And you're like, okay, this guy's wasting my freaking time. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this is nonsense. They're not going to really buy anything, you know. And then when they talk about buying something, it's always like, they're looking for the best possible deal in the world, and it's the it's come on, man, it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna put two hundred thousand on a house and get two hundred thousand plus back. Like that's not the way it works. It's not TV. You know, you know what Dude, I mean? Yeah, learning. I mean, learning the numbers is it took it took me a long time. You know, I mean, really learning how to analyze your stuff, dial and, and get your numbers dialed in, whether it's a flip or a rental or whatever it might be. But it's funny, you know, you'll talk to these people. It's like, oh yeah, I want to pick up a couple houses and flip them. It's like, yeah, there's not just a pool of those sitting just on the MLS right now. Just wait. Yeah, it's just <laughs> just go to the shelf and pick one off. I'll take that four bed, two bath in Taylorsville. It sounds good, you know. Yep. <laughs> so, what got you into flipping real estate? So, you said 2013. So, is that when you started, or was it? So, we did our first deal. Um, we bought our first deal in 2011. Um, so, just to re- kind of pick up where I left off, we went to that. We went to that uh, that sh- workshop or whatever yeah, for Armando Montalongo. And then we signed up for his bus tour and I dropped like 40 G's. Uh, no, it was 40 grand for the bus tour. So I put down 10 grand on a credit card for a deposit. And um, thankfully my dad talked us out of it because we would have been fucking dead before we started. You know, yeah. I mean, the dude's cool, but those bus tours, like, you, you know, they tell you in three days, you're going to go learn everything you need to do to flip a property. And that's just, there's nothing's happened like that, you yeah. know, in three days. So anyways, um, we joined some of the local RIAs. So, like, uh, there's a local place called Salt Lake Real Estate Investors Association, Saria, so giving them a shout out. Um, so, we, we started going around that. And I remember the first meeting I went to, dude, I was, you know, you don't know shit about real estate. And you're like, oh, I'm going to this Real Estate Investors Association, you know? So, it's like, I'm thinking like ballers that are, you know, in suits and, you know, rich dudes. And I'm rolling in just terrified, you know, don't know anything about anything. You show up and I was just like, hey, I'm the new guy, you know? I don't, like, what's up? So um, plugged into that, and then we wrote 94 offers, and it took a year, and then we got our first deal. Um, so the first deal came together, and, and I mean, the way that everything came together. So hold on, hold on. Let's go back to that. So 94 offers. So did you guys just, like, pick a territory and say, screw it, we're just going to start writing blind offers? Or what, what, how would you guys come Bro, that? we um, just all, all in the Salt Lake area. This is 2011, so that back then you could buy shit off the MLS. And um, – we had no idea what we were doing, you know? So like every house, we were just like, oh yeah, it's 20 grand in repairs. You know, we had no fucking, we had no idea. <laughs> <It's all laughs> we know that. Uh, 20, we know. 30, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 20 grand, <laughs> grand sounds good. So we found this agent, this guy named Rob, who was a new agent. And uh, so he's a new agent, doesn't really know what he's doing. He's trying to get his business going. We're new investors, have no idea what's going on. So this dude, he just fucking, dude, he wrote offer after offer. And we were just looking at properties and he was learning, we were learning and, uh, Looking back to this day, he's a successful broker now in Salt Lake. Um, it's just funny that we're like, dude, that that guy put in a lot of work, man. And we never, we never even closed a deal with him. Um, wow. But I remember writing our first offer. I was terrified, like, fuck, what if they accept it? What are we gonna do? We don't have the money. We don't have buyers to wholesale it to. <laughs> so we're almost, dude. That That's actually happened it. to me. That's when how I you do. Barely it. got into real estate. Actually, I wrote an offer on a property. I think it was off a of Hub Zoo uh-huh. auction. Yeah, and I actually got it. It was before I even, I mean, I was a real estate agent, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I actually got it. And I got it under contract. I had no help, nobody there to help me. Everybody I called, nobody would want to help. And I got it under contract. I put the earnest money up. You know, two days later, three, I got cold feet. I'm like, what the hell do I do? Yeah. I didn't know how to even go about it or anything. Um, anyway, eventually I just ended up backing out of it. I regret it, but I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know at the end of the day. Oh, and I mean, especially real estate. There's like, there's so, yeah. much, there's so much there to learn. Yeah. Um, That's so why you, you got to know your numbers at the end of the day. Yeah, you have to know your numbers. Yeah, and I spent a lot of money learning those. I'll tell yep. you in a minute. <laughs> yeah. um, but our, that first offer, you know, we we're tripping. Like, what do we do? You know, and uh, the seller responded was, "What is this? An unwelcome joke?" And I was like, "Oh, we're alive. We made it through that one." And then we just ninety four offers later, dude, we we locked one down. So it was kind of crazy. Um, my brother and I had gone to this, uh, one of those Slaria meetings they had, they used to have like uh, quarterly seminars. So I was just going, learning, meeting everyone I could, you know, just like guys back then would do like open house tours. So I was just like full blown, I'm going to do this shit, like committed, I'm going to learn it. And I didn't know shit about anything, you know, real estate related. 
so we had met this guy um, at, at, a, at one of the seminars they did. And afterwards, I was hanging out talking, and he was kind of over in the corner with his wife. And I just went up, you know, being the sales guy. Hey, man, how's it going? You know, I'm Mike, blah, blah, blah. And told him, you know, we're, me and my, this is my brother. We're getting into flipping houses. And he had just sold his company to IBM. And I think, I don't know how much he made. It was probably a few million bucks or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, yeah, me and my wife, we're just interested in starting to maybe do some private money lending, you know? I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And they actually lived in um, Cedar City. So I had just stayed in touch with him, and we had um, – so I had set a meeting with this guy for a Saturday afternoon. Him and his wife were going to be in town. So uh, we just – this was an existing meeting. So Friday night, I get a call from this dude that I'd also met there. He's like, hey, man, um, I got a deal. You know, the buyer fell out. Are you interested? And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm interested. You know, yeah, I could, I'd love to buy a house, uh-huh. you know. So I go meet him Saturday morning. There's like 18 inches of snow on the road. It's in Highland Park over there okay. on – so it's off in Imperial, okay. like 33rd South. <clears throat> so I meet this dude. We go look at the house. And um, so he's, you know, he's telling me the plan they had for the flip. And he had a contractor laid out, blah, 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 all this stuff. And um, he's like, well, here's the deal. It's got to close Monday. And it's like Saturday. I've never done a deal ever. And so I'm like, like this Monday? <laughs> he's like, yeah, man. I'm like, all right, well, let me get back to you. <laughs> Front the whole time, you know. So we go to this we go to this lunch <laughs> meeting with Gary, me and my brother, and I tell my brother, like, hey, bring Nija, my nephew, who was like maybe six months old at the time. I'm like, bring him, it'll make us look good, you know, we're two young dudes. <laughs> so we roll up, me and my brother and my nephew, and I think we were at Village Inn or something ridiculous like that. Um so anyways, we have the meeting and I don't say anything about the deal. We literally he's like, Yeah, cool, you know, well let us know if you guys have a deal, blah, blah, blah. We're getting up, shaking hands, saying bye, and I'm like, dude. It's fucking now or never. Are you yeah. really going to bitch out right now? So I just sped it out. Hey, we, actually, we have a deal. Literally, it probably sounded like terrible. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, we have a deal. And he's like looking at me like, dude, we're, le-, you know, so we sit back down. I tell him about the deal. All the numbers I'm going off are from this wholesaler, you know, and I don't know shit, dude. I don't know what the ARV. I'm like literally trusting this dude's numbers on everything. So this guy, Gary and his wife, they're like, okay, you know, we talk about it. And he's like, um, well, let us talk about it and we'll get back to you. So he calls me later that night and he's like, hey, you know, we're going to take a chance on you and your brother. And they fucking funded it, bro, Monday. So we closed that shit on Monday and uh, went with his contractor that he had, ended up everything could, that could have gone wrong, went wrong. Yeah, um, ended up ended up having to fire the contractor. Then he put a faulty lien on the property for like 20 grand. Um, he was like two months behind schedule. And then, uh, so we ended up selling it and that's back when you had to have like multiple FHA appraisals. So you're learning, I'm learning all this shit as we go. So long story short, um, we got lucky. The market was going up. It was, uh, we sold it early 2012. So we made 24 G's on that deal and then ended up having to get an attorney involved to get this guy to release this stupid lien. So we closed on the house, didn't get any money at all. Hell, it stayed in escrow. Um, so we made 24 grand on that first deal and it was, we were a year deep and and 94 offers. That's kind of how it came together. Um, so then we bought a second house, which we had no business doing at all. It was like 550 ARV back in 2011. That's a lot of money. You know what I mean? Um, so after we sold the first one for 24 grand, dude, I said, fuck it. I shut down my other business with the brokerage selling the plants that I built out for four years and never looked back, dude. We lost 50 grand on that second deal. It was a terrible experience. Our third flip, we lost like 12 grand broke even on the fourth one. And then I think we made like 12 grand on the fifth one. And I just, I mean, you know, plan B was reinforcing plan A. Yeah. You stuck with it though. Yep. Yeah. I like it. It's a little, little long winded, <laughs> but that kind of give you no, give but, you a little but, but overview. I mean, let's go, I mean, let's talk directly to the people who are thinking about jumping into the wholesaling business or the flipping business that don't, you know, like, like where you, where you were at, you know, they don't have any experience. They, 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 they don't have any hard money guys lined up. They saw Armando Montalongo or one of these guys on TV doing a show and they want to do yeah. it. 94 fucking deals, 94 offers you had to write, right? So if you guys are out there thinking this is going to be easy, we're just going to jump into it, get ready to write a shitload of offers. So what, a 1% oh conversion gosh. rate. Yeah. Well, dude, and that, that was 2011 when you could actually buy shit off the MLS, you know what I mean? But we had no idea what we were doing, so we were just coming in low, and then we slowly understood the numbers a little bit better, so our offers slowly started getting a little better. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man, that's that's how it went. Jeez, man. that's But that's the grind. Yeah. I mean, holy shit. I mean, Alan and I, we, we've had our hardships building this company. We've yep. been doing it a year, and we already know there's going to be a ton ahead of us. You know what I mean? But we're okay, you know, we're okay with that, and we understand that. And we've both been you know entrepreneurs for a long time, and 
I've been through my shit where I've lost tons of money. I mean, we're talking 700,000, you know what I mean? Where, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, we've been through this before. Like me, my conversation I have with myself, what did I learn from it? What am I know? What do I know not to do again? You know what I mean? And then just keep going because I'm not going to stop. You know what I mean? It's the same thing for you. It's yep. like, that's just, just the life that we have. And for all the other entrepreneurs out there, like that's just the way it is. You go up and you go down and you go up and you go down. But when you go down, like I appreciate those learning lessons so much you know, and those failures, I fucking love them. Dude, I, love I do, it. I love them, you know, because you know you're going to learn something at the end of it. Yeah, and I, you probably love it after the fact, you know, it's a motherfucker. Not during. Oh, not during. Yeah. <laughs> no, you I, fucking I, hate I, it during. I hit rock bottom like two years ago, man, and I had to just build right back up. Yeah, I mean, and when, you know, like, I was just sitting there, well, fuck, what am I going to, this is what I'm doing, you know, yeah. so that's just been my motto, dude, is plan B is reinforcing plan A, like, this is what we're doing, Yep. period. Yep. That's true. That's a damn good. Like, what am too. I going to do? Go fucking work for someone? Like, I yeah. grew like that was just never an option, you know? The last job I had was at Target um, when I was living in Bakersfield, you know, going to school. And, uh, dude, I kicked ass over there just because, you know, having a worker ethic. And I remember the assistant manager came in one morning just being a dick, dude. I took my shirt off, threw it at him. I was like, fuck you. And I'm out. And that was the last job I ever had. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> that's good that's good man yeah. so where are you guys at right now because all i'm seeing i mean i'm seeing a lot but i'm seeing everything on social media it looks like you guys are absolutely killing it i mean i feel like you, you are at that point right now obviously you're gonna keep growing it and hustling and grinding but i mean even to book the podcast i'm like hey when can we do it and he's like well i'm going to cabo again is cabo right again or is it where are you going this time um february yeah, in February we'll be down there, and then um, next week I'm going out to Florida. I got uh, I'm a part of a few different mastermind groups, so I'll, we're, I'll be in Florida next week. Yeah, I think so that's you're traveling a lot, about. like, dude. I mean, I mean, I love it. I mean, I mean, obviously you're probably gonna hang out over there and see some. I don't know if you're gonna vacation at all when you're down there, but I mean, I definitely would take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it looks like you've gotten to that point where you're able to, when you want to, take a vacation. Yeah. You know. I mean it. You know, I got a great team and, and everybody in place and, and with what I do. I mean, I'm when I'm gone, I'm still working every day. You guys know how it is. Oh, but yeah. it's, it's it's nice to have the flexibility to be able to go. And, you know, I've got I've just got a lot of good people that I work with and contractors and stuff in place to where I can operate, you know, short term pretty much yeah. from anywhere. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome, man. So tell me about what you're doing right now. So so you're doing you're flipping houses. Um, you have a, a mortgage company, too, that you guys just opened up. Yeah. But, but you've been doing that for a while, though. It's not like you just barely started doing loans, right? Yeah, so we, um, so I started doing loans, I think, in 2015 when there was just a big refi boom going on. One of my buddies um, that I'd met just kept hitting me up like, hey, dude, you know, like, we're making a ton of fucking money in loans right now. Like, why don't you come over? Come be on my team, you know? And um, I actually told him, I was like, dude, like, that's when I was first, like, getting some traction going with, like, my flips were always going, but then I was, like, doing the real estate agent thing, and I was closing a couple deals a month on that, and I was like, dude, I got my, you know, I got some traction going, but I was like, you know, my brother, so I, I ended up sending my brother over there, and my brother um, was his assistant that got his license and just started crushing it in loans, and he's not really, like, the, like, outgoing sales guy like I am, and he was doing, like, 20 loans a month, just killing it, you know, so then I was like, I had a couple of bad real estate deals go sideways on the retail side. And I'm like watching my little brother make 20, 25 G's a month. And I was like, fuck this dude. <laughs> hey bro. Like I'm ready to come over and, you know, do some loans. So I, I think I took 10 days, went through all the online shit, passed the test. And then we were just doing refinances, uh, primarily VA loans. So license, I built my license up to about 40 licenses at one point and we were just doing over the phone. So leads would come in, you know, you grab the call and then you would just, you know, close these people on a refinance we were selling hybrid arm loans. So it was, I mean, the owner, if we're calling it what it is, he was sending out pretty deceptive marketing. Like, oh, do you have a rate over 1.75? And then people would call in and then we'd be like, oh, that's actually an arm rate, you know? And as long as you had some sales skills, um, we, you know, we'd end up refinancing those people. So we were doing that from 2015, probably through 2017. And then um, I just quit doing that and, and went over to the traditional mortgage route. And my flips were always going in the background. I still doing retail real estate in the background too. So it's just kind of all come together. Wow. Is that, is that the, the watch I'm thinking it is? Yeah. Ooh. This is the Rolly. <laughs> There's the Rolly right there. <laughs> I, I, I saw that post that, that you put up, you know what I mean? Like you, you set a yeah. goal and you're like, Hey, if I smash this, I'm going to buy myself a nice watch. And I was like, I love that. You know what I mean? It's kind of like with you with the, with the car yeah. and some of the other stuff. And, and I'm like, it's good to see people who are busting their ass, like reward themselves. 
You know what I mean? I mean, fucking A, dude. Like, this is not an easy life. Yeah, if you work your ass off, you got to <laughs> you treat yourself. I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah, and one of our agents just purchased uh, a really nice car. She bought a new Range Rover. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, when she came here, you know, she's driving a Jeep, and, and she's been really hustling and grinding. I think she's going to put five on her contract this weekend. Yeah, we talked to her like an hour ago. Um, she's a really, really top-level, uh, awesome. top-producing agent. And <clears throat> it's cool because she had – it was a struggle for her, and I see it with a lot of people who are – I don't want to say she had a poor mentality, but people who have that poor mentality and they're afraid to invest in themselves or they feel like it's selfish or they're like arrogant, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I'm like, you know what? Like I had a talk with her and so did you and other people like, Hey, this purchase is not about you showing off or anything. This is about you, you know, taking care of yourself and rewarding yourself for all the work you put in. And, uh, the owner of the company had a conversation with all of us about that, you know, mentality and mindset and making decisions like that to purchase a Rolex, you know? And, and he's like, you know what it is? It's you're, you're, you're rewarding yourself, but it's like a daily thing. Like you're reminded, you get in your car and you're like, damn, this is my reward every single day, you know, to drive this nice car. You're investing to, in yourself is the way I look at it. Like just that, you know, that feeling of accomplishment, like, Hey, it makes you want to work that much, that much harder when it comes down to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, Not, it's true. I would agree. I mean, I think there's, there's multiple pieces to it. Like mm -hmm. me growing I have a hard time. Like, I don't spend more than 50 bucks on a pair of shoes till today. Like, I'll spend money. I got a nice house, a nice truck, you know, a watch, and I like to travel. But outside of that, I'm pretty frugal, dude. Like, I don't really like to blow money. I'm not flashy. So, like, make even making that post was, like, kind of hard for me because I'm uh -huh. like, you know. But like you said, it's, 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 it's especially with me, what I'm trying to do with my social media, it's, it's kind of an inspiration, too. So, when I, when I get these messages from people like, hey, man, and, and you know, so it's not – it's not me, you know, being perceived as being flashy. It's like there's a story behind that and that, you know. So that was really cool to get the feedback. But, dude, I hit my goal four fucking times before I was like, okay, you can do it. Like, I was like, all right, when I, you know, when I do this, I'm going to buy the Rolex. I hit it and I'm like, ah, it's not worth it. I, you know, like that's stupid. You're being done with your money. So I literally hit my goal four different times and then I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to fucking do it. Nice, dude. So, nice. Dude, I went through the exact same thing. Even what, what, when I put up that picture of the car. Cause I didn't want to come off like, hey, look at me, look at me. But I wanted to inspire other people that, hey, you can do it too. And getting all that love and feedback from people, reaching out, going, hey, man, like, I love your story. I love everything you're about. Same thing with you as well. Like, yeah. you do it to inspire other people. Yeah. Well, so there's a mindset with it too, you know, like you're, you're, you're raising your standard in a way. So there's a, there's a piece of that to it. But also to call it what it is, man, we're in business and that's a sign of success, you know, mm -hmm. like. When, when people see you pulling up in a fucking Lambo, like, you're not broke. You know what you're doing, yeah. you know? So, yeah. like, that's instant credibility. Like, when I'm having a meeting and, you know, I see someone looking at my watch, I'm like, okay, they know, you know, it's just, you know. So, it's not a material thing, but it's a, it's, it's a status and it's an earned earned thing. But I think when you come from somewhere where it sounds like all of us do, you know, you're building from nothing. Yep. And you Ground get up. there and you take some heavy licks on the way up, you know. You, and then, you know, if you're in real estate like we are, we know 2008 was a thing. So, there's kind of that you know, kind of that skittish dog mentality. Like, you know, it's not always going to be good forever. And fuck, it was a motherfucker getting here. So I don't want to be stupid with yep. the money. So there's, a, you know, a lot of that for me too. I feel like for me, it was right when I got a little lick, I got hooked. Yeah. I got hooked on success Yeah, and just went all in. Same thing with you as well. You got a little lick and you're like, whoa, holy shit. Well, dude, and when you, when you, when you take a beating or a lick and you uh -huh. get out on the other side, that, that confidence you have with yourself takes you to a whole nother level. Uh -huh. Like, there was, there was, I mean, that meeting with that contractor and like going toe to toe with him and fucking Einstein's bagel right down the street yeah. is where me and him had that, uh, <clears throat> that meeting at. And I know he was thinking, oh, I'm just going to push this young kid around. I was 26, probably looked like I was 18, yeah. you know? And, uh, I just stood my ground. I was like, fuck you, dude. Like, you know, all right, we'll, we'll go that route then. That's fine. And then there was another specific meeting I had, um, with two attorneys that were owner owners of a title company and um the deal was going super sideways i had two hard money loans on it um and the guys in second position got recorded in first position somehow and um i was losing money on the deal nothing was going well the market was sliding and then uh like comps like there was a guy phil harvey actually had like five houses around me and he was doing like fifty thousand dollar price drops so i was just not in a good spot wow. up in the avenues so I go in to have a meeting with this title company, you know, and I'm, I'm like sitting here, the young guy on the block. I got, you know, experienced hard money lender. I got these other guys. He's a 65 year old, multiple business guy. He's got millions of dollars. And, you know, I'm sitting here having to try and keep the peace with everybody. And I, I, I thought I was going to meet with the, the title company 
um, and these two attorneys, and I think, and they were on my team, and they came at me hard, dude. And um, that was a defining moment in my career, man. Like I, I just threw down with these two guys out of left field. I didn't think that's what was happening, and walking out of that meeting just put me on a whole nother level. I got out of the deal and everything. We lost like 26 grand, but that specific meeting, I remember till today, like I was a different dude after that in business. Just cause I, you know, I was like, I just handled myself out of left field with two fucking attorneys and you know, like it, it went well. Your yeah. confidence like, went like, through the roof. Yeah, I was like, yeah, dude, yeah. So I think I think stuff like that's good. Oh, it yeah. is, it's so good. Yeah, that's, that stuff is, I mean, you and I both have our fair share of, you know, issues with uh, individuals in business, which is totally fine. I actually don't mind it at all. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Uh, it's all an experience. But, uh, I mean, let, so, so let's talk about uh, the, the process of purchasing a property. Um, I mean, I know a lot of agents that we know that, you know, they thought about getting into that market, the flipping and stuff like that. And, and, and Alan and myself, we've talked about it. You know, we did that one and, and you know, we have other opportunities that come up and, and they present themselves and we're just like, no, it's not really something that we're into. I mean, but if somebody wanted to start and they're like, hey, I want to get into flipping, I mean, what would you recommend? Would you tell them to go jump on a bus ride with Armando Montalongo or what would you No, do? that's the last thing I tell you to do. Um, <laughs> that's the last thing I tell you to do. No, what I would tell you to do is, is join, you know, there's YouTube podcasts. There's all the basic shit that you need there, you know get familiar with that. But I think the biggest thing is having the contacts and the connections. So I would join your local real estate investors group. So here in Utah, it's Slaria, where they have Utah Ria. Um, there's a few good ones here, but that's the first thing I would do because everyone that you need to do a deal with is going to be in that room. And and that was my, my first probably 10 deals were all involved with people that I met there. You're going to have guys that are wholesaling deals. You're going to have hard money lenders. You're going to have contractors. You're going to have realtors, lenders, title people, like everyone you need to do a deal is going to be in that room and deals are going to be happening. So you're putting yourself in an environment where people are doing what you want to do. And then, so you're going to be, you know, you're going to be around it. Um, people are going to be talking about deals. And then, so I would do that. And then I would go find someone that's actually doing shit. And I would come from them, come to them from a, a position of value. Not like, Hey, can I pick nothing pisses yeah. me off more then someone hits me up like, hey, can I can I pick your brain? Can like your ten dollar yeah. lunch isn't worth my fucking hour for you to pick my brain for the hundred G's that I have into my brain just on this one topic. You know what I mean? So that would be my suggestion, and, and come from a place of value. Hey, what what can I? I'm new in the game. Is there anything I do to bring value to you? I see you're flipping houses. I'd you know, could I do cleanup at one of your construction things? Could I? Could, what could I do to bring value to you? But I'd really like to check out one of your projects. You know, could I maybe walk one with you one time? Maybe kind of show me the numbers and you know, go over the deal, but that's what I would do. hundred yeah, percent. That's what I did do. And, um, that, yeah, so that's what I would do if you were new, but with the, with flips is just being real estate in general, but on the investing side, you really got to be honest with your numbers. Mm -hmm. Like that second deal that we lost 50 grand on, I just wasn't, wasn't You're being naive. Like, Oh, yeah. I can do that a lot less. Yeah. Or it's really easy. You want to do a deal real bad. So on paper, you know, it's really easy to be like, Oh, well the comps say it's worth three twenty five, but you know, I bet I could push it to 335, 330, you know, and all, oh, you know, rehab's probably 50 grand, but I bet I could shave it down to like 40. Okay, well, now you're 10 G's light on your rehab and you're overshooting your, your back end ARV after repair value, ARV, for those that don't know. You know, so when you're when you're bullshitting your numbers with yourself, you, you know, if you're thinking you're going to sell it for a little more and you're going to do the rehab for a little less, well, if the numbers hit to where you initially thought they were, maybe you're breaking even at that point. And if you're off on either one, which is more than likely the case, now you're in the red. So it's really easy to make a deal look like a deal on paper because you want to do that deal so bad. Yeah. Um, that would That's always my top advice. It's hard advice to follow. Um, you know, I just had to do that myself on a 35-unit deal in Tennessee I've been working on. I had a lot of time and emotion vested into it. And I'm like, bro you got to do the shit you tell everyone to do all the time. You know, you got to be able to walk away from it. But I think it's really easy to do that. I did that a lot and I lost a lot of money doing that. Yeah. So what for you has been the, uh, <clears throat> the best return on investment when it comes to the marketing? Is it just like, are, are you guys just cold calling? Are you guys knocking doors? I mean, what for you and what, what's been the best? Dude, my best return on uh, my time has been my relationships. I mean, We've just started doing some marketing on the investing side. We've always done marketing on the retail and the mortgage side, but the relationships, dude, I've, you know, like everything I do in my business is relationship driven. So all the way up until about a year ago, we, I didn't even market for investment deals. You know, I got them because of my relationships. Agents call me with stuff. 
you know, referrals from people, other investors selling me stuff, um, or, you know, wholesalers that are selling deals, but they've got a relationship with me. So they sell me the deal or now I've got some credibility, you know, but I, I'm always going to say relationships are the biggest thing you could invest in other yeah, than yourself. That's so true. So speaking of relationships, and I do want to touch on this topic. Um, and this is, uh, the topic of mindset, right? Because I know that like you invest heavily in, oh, yeah. in this, I mean, you're talking about you, you. You talked about earlier the mastermind groups that you you know travel the country to go and visit, and and I'm sure speak at. You know what I mean, and and, and uh, engage with other people. Like, I mean, how important is that to you, man? Do you feel like that's like a, a massive, massive part of your success is making sure you're surrounding yourself with those people who who have done it, done it before, and and you got to pay to play. You can't just call up and go hang out with these dudes. I mean, um, I mean, how's that? How's it helped your business? Oh, dude, mindset's the foundation of everything, you know, like, if you don't have a mindset, you're not getting anywhere, you know, just earlier, I said, you know, plan B is reinforcing plan A, that's like a a starting mindset. But yeah, man, I've invested hundreds of 1000s into myself. Um, And I don't say that from a bragging standpoint, that's just what it is. But you know, like, I paid 70 grand to be an Arte syndicate. um, Last year, that that doesn't really exist anymore, like the where I was at, you know, but this mastermind I'm flying out to next week, that's like 24,000 for the year. And we meet up four times a year and have a Facebook group. But, um, you know, in this mastermind, that 40 unit apartment deal I just did with those guys that came from, I'm doing that deal with guys in my mastermind, you know, guys in the RTA group, you know, when you're hanging around dudes that are making two, three, four, five million 5 million bucks a year, that's a different conversation. And it naturally brings you up. Plus I'm a younger guy, not, you know, usually in those circles. Um, and you just can't, I mean, you can't put a dollar value on that. You know, there's guys in that group that are lending me private money now. So, you know, it's the contact, like the content is important, but like the contacts has really been a big thing there. But, um, yeah, man, I invest a lot in, into the mindset, conferences, books, you know, every day. Wow. What are some good books that you're reading right now? Um, right now I'm really reading a book called, uh, release the breaks, release the Breaks, something like that. Um, Dan Pena, mm recommend you know dan yeah he's kind of a hardcore dude yeah, he, he recommended that book it's <laughs> i fucking actually, love that guy actually. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so he recommended that it's, it's called i think it's releasing your breaks or something like that so i'm reading that right now but all the staples you know think and grow rich yep. um i really like that one uh i like sell stuff anything grant cardone i followed cardone really heavily for about three years and i'd say that's the foundation of the whole idea of 10x like changed my life. That was right when I was at C21. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, doing some flips, doing some retail stuff. And the whole idea of, you know, having to put out 10 times the effort, you know, than you ever think you are. And, and just the whole 10x um, thought process. That's really when I started gaining traction. So, but I, if you're not, if you're not, you know, it's just like the gym, you know, mm-hmm. if you're not, if you're not working out on your mindset, like I, I don't know one business dude that's semi-successful that's not reading books, going to seminars, you know, hanging out with people that are, you know, like you're not going to build a million dollar business if you're at the bar fucking around with your loser buddies every weekend. It's just not going to happen. Yep. And I'm, I'm the last like 18 months. I've been really been getting like heavy, heavy into the spiritual side of stuff and energy and understanding how all that shit works. And dude, that's the real deal, man. And that is it, the real deal. It really is. That is the real and, deal. And you, 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 you fucking, you attract, man. Mm-hmm. You attract what you're putting out, yep. what you're thinking about. Yep. <laughs> and so when you're doing these things, you know, you're swinging the bat, you're taking the risk, you're investing in yourself you're grinding out 10 12 16 hour days you're doing all of that shit you're not gonna fucking lose because it's impossible man yeah. like you're, you're putting it all out there yep yep it's funny because you, you put a post up uh you, so so you put a post up um the, maybe yesterday the day before maybe it was last night who knows i don't even know time anymore time doesn't exist that's how crazy i am <laughs> I know. i'm serious right and you put a post up and it was like sacred uh sacred uh geometry found in nature and it was like you know the just all, all that cool stuff and and you know i recently had a, a trip that i went on and you know i don't i definitely don't dabble in drugs all the time you know but i am a very spiritual person and if i'm gonna have the opportunity to experience something with plant medicine i i usually will take it up and i'm not acting a fool when i do it but you know i had this one experience and um i was seeing all these crazy patterns <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and 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 I, it was in, absolutely insane because when I was younger, I would party and I would drink alcohol and, you know, I would get messed yeah. up and, and, and that feeling of intoxication, not being aware of what's going on. I fucking hate that feeling. 
and and the experience I had with you know and I'll say it right here in the podcast it was psychedelics you know and, and I tried it was magic mushrooms you know and and when I did it I took an extremely heavy dose I mean I'm talking five times the recommended dose and and what I experienced was not anything like something that would make me feel intoxicated I was completely aware I'm like I could have drove a car at that time I felt so like 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 I was in control but it made me aware of something that I feel like a lot of us lose touch with and that's spirituality right and what's really going on behind this veil or whatever the hell you want to call it like I do think that there's almost like uh unwritten rule or law to attracting things that you want manifestation i feel like is actually really big and and you know what i experienced made me extremely aware of that and i've kind of been aware of that where i'm like oh you know law of attraction if i think about it think about it read about it focus on it you know and eventually it'll come and you know surround myself with people who kind of feel the same way they're not kind of pushing me away from that um but this experience i had made me aware like this is real Oh, dude, it's called the truth, bro. Yeah, it's seriously. It shows you the truth. Yeah, yeah. this is real. Yeah, this isn't some bullshit. No, you know? I've, I've, uh, so the last 18 months, I was telling you, I, so I, I took, um, I did an ayahuasca ceremony there we go. in November of 2019. And, um, it's hard to put in the, you know, it's you hard to put there's in, no words but for it, it, but it's not, it's not, it's not, oh, I want to go get, like, if anyone's ever done ayahuasca, you know, you're not going doing that shit recreationally. Like, yep. it tastes terrible. You're going to get sick. And you're going to get, like, shown your fucking self. Yep. Uh, and, and it's not fun at all. So, you know, and, and with the mushrooms, you know, a lot of people will take that just to get fucked up and whatever. No, but, dude, if you come from a spiritual standpoint mm -hmm. with an intent of what you're working on, um, dude, it, it, it puts it, – it just – puts you in a place that you you know you just don't get on your own but like yeah. you get shown the truth and uh so anyways when i say spiritual i mean that's like i've been doing a lot of training with that stuff too but um that's what i call it the truth man it and is then, the truth and when you get you know some people call it god some people the universe some people call it source you know whatever it is for you but when you're in touch with that divine self um and people are listening like these guys are fucking crazy. No, but this is We're real going shit. from real estate to talking but about this. But this is real um, shit, and it goes dude, hand in hand. I will tell, yeah, and and bro, like every right now, today, I sit at the best place I've ever been in my life across the board. You pick the area. I'm in the best shape. I made way more fucking money than I did ever last year. My marriage is awesome. My family is awesome. My all my relationships, my investments, like everything is the best that it's ever been. And it's because I'm focusing on the spiritual stuff, which is, you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but when you do those plant medicines, I mean, the shit's natural. It's growing from the ground. They've been working with this stuff for thousands of years, mm -hmm. you know, but um, it shows you, you is the best way to put it. And, you know, when, when you're showing the truth in yourself, you, yeah. you know, if you choose to look the other way, then, then you have to deal with that with yourself. Yeah, but if you, yourself. Yeah. But if you bust through it and, and you, you take it on, you just keep growing so I've, I've always been doing the business stuff and, you know, all the conferences, the books, the money, you know, it's, but it's been money and success driven, but you know, through that you're working on yourself and you're just kind of like building these layers. And then the last 18 months I've thrown the spiritual shit on top of it. And like, dude, I've just, everything has exploded. Yep. Yep. It's so true. It's so true. I got to jump on that. Apparently. You got to jump on it. You get, I'm, you I'm, have to I'm jump out of the loop here. I'm like, I got to jump you're on that. You're so right <laughs> when you say that there are no words to describe the experience. It just doesn't exist. And you can do your best. And I told Alan after, you know, I, I had my spiritual experience. I was like, I was like, dude, like I felt kind of down for the next couple of days because I felt so alone in my experience. Like, oh, my God, what did I just go through? And and who else knows what that's like and it's like what is going on and it took me and i think a lot of it had to do with the dopamine and serotonin that was just completely depleted you know from 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 my mind and and but just really and i was conscious during the whole thing like well dude it's it's emotionally overwhelming yes you process so much energy and so many emotions and and uh you know and if it's your first time like whether it's your first time or not you it, it's such an overwhelming overload of everything going on and all the stuff you're experiencing and processing. And, and, you know, there's a lot of energy that's flowing with that. So I, you know, you definitely, I'm always, you know, exhausted for sure the following day, yeah. but like then you spend two, three weeks a month <clears throat> processing uh -huh. all the shit, you know, and, and you're connecting dots a week after two weeks after just, you know, just keep having these epiphanies. Um, you know, I, so I had a, a buyer recently, really good friend of mine. We go back years and years and years and, um, I helped him purchase a property and it was really cool. Um, it was kind of challenging because, um, he and his wife both had different ideas of what they wanted in a, in a, in a 
kind of a forever home, you know, mm-hmm. it was a really big house that they were looking at. Um, and one of the things was, one of the things that they both agreed on was, you know, they want something where they could hold a ayahuasca ceremony, you okay. know, a retreat. Yeah. And so, um, and we go way back, you know, I mean, this guy go way back to before he and I were successful. We were driving our bicycles looking for like, like, like commercial properties to put yeah. a salon or a barbershop in way back in the day. And, um, anyway, we were very, very close. I'm not going to say his name cause he might get pissed if I tell him, but, <laughs> but, and that stuff is still, you know, kind of frowned upon, you know, legally. And so, you know, it's something that still has to be kind of hidden when it happens. But when we look for a property, we found one and it was, it was the one and, uh, somebody had purchased it. They like, we went under contract. We lost the, the, uh, the offer. We, we, we didn't get it. And I was mad. They were mad. And we're like, where are we going to find another one? And just so happens a week later, fill out a contract that we Came slid back. right in yeah. and Bro, we got it. I'm telling you, yep. man, like when, when, when you're intentional and you're, you know, you're, you're connected and you're, you're focusing and you're, you're manifesting, if you want to call it, you're focused on what you're doing and, and you're doing your part and all of that stuff. And it's the truth. Like shit, dude, shit it just works happens. out. It works stuff out. happens, man. And it's crazy how it does, but you know, one thing I've been learning a lot is, uh, and that, that I've been showing, you know, through all of this stuff is, uh, you just got to show up and do your part, man. And yep. just, you know, the, the mechanics kind of take care of themselves. Yep. Yeah. It's so true. And, and, and they got it and I'm so happy and he's inviting me, you know, to, to, oh, cool. to go and, and, and do it. Cause I've never done ayahuasca, you know? Um, but I know people who have, and, and when I talk to them, you can tell they're different, you know, you, you can tell they're different, you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, it's crazy. And I don't think it's just like, Oh, I did ayahuasca. It's just, that's just a tool that is helping you on a spiritual journey. So it's not like, Oh, I'm just going to go drink it, you know, do an ayahuasca ceremony over the weekend. And then now, Oh, everything's good. I'm a different person. All it's going to do is show you and give you information and data and, and show you stuff and put you in touch with things, but you still have to be doing the work. You know what I mean? It's just a tool, just like anything else. And I really just, because we're talking about it and it is, you know, some people might frown upon it. I, you know, like you need to be doing like these people that are doing these and if they're legit shaman, like they're, are, they're like trained. It's not like, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, we're just fucking around to get high. Like these people have trained with it. Like there's a high respect with it. Like it's very, you know, you're in touch with, with the mother earth and, and it's, mm-hmm. it's very much of that thing. It's not like, Oh, we're going to go get fucked up. Yeah. No, so I really, really out of respect for what, for what that is and the work that's involved. I just really want to, make that clear on the podcast. Yeah, no, like definitely. It's a, it's a very sacred thing. It's definitely, it, it definitely is. And he told me that there's a, they call it a dieta that you do you know, oh, yeah. before. And, mm-hmm. and he told me what that was. And I'm like, dude, that sounds very challenging, you know, to disconnect from social media, to, to stop eating certain things and to yeah. clear your body oh, yeah. and to, and to uh, deprive yourself of a lot of the things that you need as a human being, you know, sexually also. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this sounds like a, I don't know if I can do that. You know what I mean? It's yeah, really I mean, challenging. That's, that's a pretty hardcore part to it. But I mean, you know, the first time I did ayahuasca, there was no sex for a week. Mm-hmm. No, you know, no drinking sodas, no red meats. Like there's a pretty specific diet you want to do. Um, so yeah, dude, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, but I'm, I'm ex- extremely grateful to have um, just kind of, and again, you know, like I've just been working on myself, working on myself for five, six years. And this is that missing bridge that, you know, it's like the missing piece that I haven't had. And it's interesting how it just showed up, you know, out of nowhere, how it did. Um, yeah. you know, I would have never taken you like I would have. First of all, I knew we were going to talk about these subjects in the podcast. I would have never thought Mike was going to be the one that we talked yeah. about. <laughs> I didn't plan on that one either. No, dude, list, people listening probably are like, this Trump loving fucking crazy ass <laughs> business dude is talking about ayahuasca. What? I thought he was, you know, some crazy asshole. Yeah, no, it's 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 true, man. But it's real. And this is a real podcast. And we'll talk about all this. And uh, coincidentally, I have a ton of entrepreneur friends who have done that. You, you want know. to know what's crazy when I've, uh, so when I'm at these, uh, ceremonies is the proper way to call them. Mm-hmm. There is high level fucking business people there. Like I was blown away the first time I ever went. And then, um, like the other things that I'm working on and doing, like the people that are there when you're chatting, like, and you know, afterwards or whatever, I'm talking like high net worth, like extremely high producing like people like i was really really surprised i thought it'd be a bunch of hippies and shit and you have that too but like there's some some serious fucking players that are that are um you know working on themselves in this in this uh in this fashion yeah 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 i mean um you know my my, my buddy who does it and he's you know 
he's actually going down that that road to to eventually host ceremonies. You know that that's that's the goal, and he's got a really challenging story. You know, and he told me it's helped him heal a lot of some, some of the stuff that he's he's been through and he's put on people, and and that's that's what I like about it. You know, I'm like, hey, it's probably gonna expose some dark things that I have in my past. You know, that I need to work on that I'm probably carrying around. I don't even know it, and it could be influencing uh, the way I operate and my business and. You know some of the things that I do when, as an entrepreneur, and I'm like maybe that that will help. You know, and so I'm very interested in, in that actually. Dude, it was the most terrifying thing I've ever done going into it because you know you hear the stories, you don't know what to think, you you have zero control on it. It was the scariest thing I've ever done, not the actual experience, but the going into it and like okay, I'm gonna surrender and and just letting it you know. But it, it's it's interesting how you get exactly what you need. Um, yeah, man. It's, 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 I'm it's, so out of the loop here. Yeah. yeah. I'm no, out of the loop. Alan, uh, Alan is somebody. And so, you know, we talked about a coach yesterday or the, the day before when we were setting the schedule for this thing because, you know, I've been seeing a, a, a coach now for, and I talk about all the time that I hate that term, life coach, because you always hear people who are life coach and you're like, what are you talking about? I wouldn't pump, trust you to pump my gas. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't understand that. There should be something that differentiates it too. But this lady I see is a real one, you know, and she's got an amazing resume. I'm talking traveling with you know, the CEO that she coached of British Petroleum, like big, big, big wig, right? And she's, she's you know, a little older now, and she's kind of like set in her ways, and she's a little house in Sugar House. You know, her name's Catherine Dixon. Amazing, amazing life coach. Completely changed my life. And uh, Alan is a high driver, you know, very, very successful, um, extremely self-motivated. You know, he's very focused. And, you know, some of the stuff that he and I talk about, I'm just like, you know, this is something that I feel like he's missing that would help him balance out his lifestyle. And I introduced him and now he's seeing her. And I mean, you love it. Yeah. I love it, man. Bro, I'm, I'm the same way. Type A, like go, 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 you yeah. know, just, I'm going to force will it to happen. Um, so I've been meeting, I have, a, I have a coach now too, uh, who I've kind of met through that world that I meet with every Wednesday and what you were just saying, like, there's so much shit that you're operating on that you have no clue. Yeah. Like the last month has just been, absolutely mind-blowing to me to to understand why i am certain ways you uh -huh. know, that i had no clue going back working with her so i'm excited for you bro it's gonna be Dude, i'm looking forward to it. I went yeah. last week and i'm going tomorrow as well actually yeah um and i just feel like when i walk when i came out because you know number one reality will hit you mm -hmm. you know they hit you with reality they tell you how, how it is too and you're like fuck you at first you, you, you don't want to hear that mm -hmm. yeah but you have to be honest with yourself, and that's the reality of it. Um, but it makes you like actually a lot more aware of what's going on around you, um, internally, externally, et cetera. Um, so actually, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, tomorrow yeah, will be day, day number two. Just, you just barely started. You have no idea. <laughs> I came out like look feeling. I did it. A whole I started. Level. I started in 2013. I believe it was 2013, October, December, somewhere around there, end of the year. And the reason why I started is because, you know, I was building a school and, you know, I, I, actually, I was actually building a stage for me to teach. And I was in the hair industry, teach hair in okay. my school. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's like three in the morning. I'm like finishing up with a nail gun, putting the stage together. And I sit on my stage. And I'm standing on my stage looking at my audience, from my, my chairs. And I'm like, holy shit, I have to be up here and teach. Like, I'm terrified of public speaking. Yeah. And I'm like, that's something I need to overcome. How am I going to do that? Uh, let me start calling. And I looked into all these different like coaching systems and I met with people and none of them really I, I could connect with. And so I looked online and, and I just typed life coaching. You know, I'm like, maybe it's a life coach I need thinking it was going to help me with public speaking. And so I, I reach out to this lady and we talk on the phone for like an hour and she explains her process. I'm like, this sounds like something that has nothing to do with life coach or nothing to do with public speaking. Right. <clears throat> I thought it was going to be like this tailored program. Yeah. And, uh, like this Dell Carnegie program. And I, and I looked into that too. Right. And it had nothing to do with that. So I meet with her and we go over this, like, uh, this, this first time we met and we talked and I'm like, okay, I want to sign up, you know? And then I went for the second time and the second time I just broke down crying. I'm talking like a gallon of tears. And the crazy thing is this, I, and this is when I was 24, 25, 26, somewhere around there. I hadn't cried since I was like nine years old before oh, that. So it was like, 14 years of like, <laughs> like, I was just a stone, right? Just so hard, no emotions, nothing. And it was like 14 years of just like tears building up. And I didn't even know why the hell I was crying. Like, but we went yeah. over it and it was just me releasing all this like bullshit that I carried around for years. And I'm like, oh, this is what, this is like therapy then. And she's like, well, it's therapy if you need therapy. It's psychotherapy, you need psychotherapy. And, and you'll find out that 
you're just working on yourself, you know, and yeah. you're clearing up some of this bullshit you've been carrying around. And, and I, and I worked on it. It took seven years to get me here. And I'm not terrified of public speaking. I got through that shit. I'm not terrified of anything. Like I'm not, you know? And so, I'm, I mean, maybe things that would happen to my family or something scares me, you know, but for me personally, I'm not, I, I feel like I'm completely fearless and, and, and working with a coach got me there. Well, dude. Know? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. Cause I'm like, literally I'm in like balls deep and everything we're talking about, like in my life and what I'm yeah. working on. But when you're, when you're, when you're a hundred percent like clear on your intention and what you're doing and, and you're just, you're, you're, it, I call it in, I call it flow for me when I'm in flow and I know I'm being my true, I hate the word, you know, Oh, your authentic self. Cause it's mm-hmm. such a fucking tagline right now. But when, when you're, when you're just, you're, you know who you are and you know what you're about and you, and you're in your flow and you're being your authentic self. There's this like, you don't really care what other people think. You don't you mind your business. Cause yep. you well, cause, and it's not about what other people think, but you just, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You know, you're, you know, you are operating at the best version of yourself. And there's such a sense of peace and confidence that comes with that. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're a driver and a business guy and you're always doing all this shit and, you know, you have the goals and just all the pressure and, you know, all of that stuff, it's, it's really, uh, you kind of get, you get pulled away from that world and, and, you know, trying to weave the two together is what I've been really working on. But when you get in that flow with yourself, um, there's just a sense of inner peace that for me being a type A, I didn't know what that was like. I didn't know what presence was like, cause I was always living fucking a year down the road and worry about worrying about shit. That's not even fuck. I'm worrying about stuff that I'm not even working on yet. Not working out like crazy, bro. Like when you sit and really think about it, you're like, mm-hmm. this is fucking nuts. Like, you know, so I'm excited for you, dude. Um, keep I'm looking going forward to it, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Man. So I, I, I know you got to go. I know you got some stuff you got to yeah, do, no, do not, before yeah. you go though. I, I want to hit on something because you know, we, we talked, uh, we're talking about self-improvement and so all that good stuff. Right. Yeah. Which is obviously super important when you're trying to become a businessman or entrepreneur. You have to work on yourself. You got to know self reflecting and you got to be honest with yourself. One of the things is health, right? Health is super important to you. It's very important to me. It's very important to you, you know, to the point where we actually have a nutritionist that we hired. Oh, awesome. um, and it, I made some small tweaks and it's really helped me dramatically. You know what I mean? With everything. And I thought I was super unhealthy when I was like, 29 30 you know and then when i got to 32 33 and the real stress started piling on building a company i noticed that my weight was just going up and i'm like what the fuck i'm trying to like lose weight how i did when i was 18 and it's not working you know i'm depriving myself of calories and that's not working like what is going on with my body and i i went and i saw a coach one a nutrition coach nutritionist and he's like oh it's hormonal look at your hormones i got blood work done they put me on you know testosterone therapy and 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 stuff like that and and that's helped me dramatically and and I'm like, oh my God, it's helped me with my mental performance, my <laughs> sexual performance, like just everything, right? It's like, holy shit, this is making me like, like a, a like a, the man I was when I was 23, 24, you know? And with you, I saw a picture you posted the other day, and it was like your before and after your uh, 75 hard. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. Okay, but but that's important to you. And I saw that picture, and you got it. I'm gonna get that photo if you don't send it to me. I'm gonna put it up because, yeah, dude, okay. that was a pretty good photo. Like you were in the car where you throwing a hamburger down or something. I was macking some uh, <laughs> Senor Pollo, dude. Okay. <laughs> oh, I seen that picture. Yeah. I saw that photo. Yeah, I'm like mid bite. It's actually one of my contractors. I was in his truck with him, and we were eating that shit like multiple times a week, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was kind of crazy to see. It. I mean, it's not a flattering angle and everything. No, but, but that's like, life. It, yeah, dude. It's real stuff. But when you're, you know, when you're focused on business and you're just grinding, you got all the stress and all that shit. Um, I've always, what's crazy is I've always gone to the gym. Like, I've never not missed the gym because it's been a good outlet for me. But when you're eating, not even eating like shit, you're just not, con- like, you're just not aware of what you're eating, you know, or I'm eating late at night. Um, and the intentional thing, man, really, like. I was just kind of like at the gym still for probably four days a week, but it's just on autopilot. I'm not being intentional. I wasn't there with, you know, this is what I'm doing. I wasn't like not necessarily tracking my shit, but I just wasn't. I was just kind of on autopilot. Yeah. So I did um, the 75 hard program. Andy Frisella, um put that thing together, who also runs the RTA group that I'm a part of. Um, but it's basically 75 days. It's, it's two workouts a day, um, 45 minutes. One has to be outdoors no matter what a gallon of water every day. You got to read 10 pages of a book. You got to follow a diet. It's any diet. It can be whatever you want. And just the whole point is, is that you're committing to a diet and you're sticking to it. And then um, you have to take a progress picture every day and no alcohol. 
for 75 days. You miss any one thing, you got to start back over. Yes, okay, r- real quick. I downloaded that app. It's an app, right? Downloaded the app, and I started. This was a long time ago when I first like started talking to you. And I hit you up because I failed after like a week. Yeah. <laughs> and I hit you up, and I was like, bro, how, so – Talk to me about your mindset because you're going through this and I'm like, dude, how are you balancing everything out? Like, and you told me this one thing that really hit me and you're like, either you want it or you don't. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's very simple. <laughs> like he didn't give me this long story about what you need to do before and this and that. He's like, well, it's either you want it or you don't. And I'm like, damn. Yeah, do it or don't. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's so true, man. And then after that point, like I started seeing nutritionists and I'm, you know, I tailored it for, for, for what I could, I feel like what I was, uh, could tolerate, you know, what I could tolerate and. And that was it, really learning about who I am right now, where my body is right now, my schedule. You know, as entrepreneurs, my nutritionist told me this. He said, dude, you guys operate at this stress level that's very high. And not that not every person has that. And that does a lot of stuff to your body. And I'm like, really? Like, stress really is, is, is like putting, like, making me store fat and doing all this other stuff. And I didn't understand that. And when I learned that, I'm like, okay, this is what I need to be eating. And this is... I can't change this like to this extreme diet because I've tried that yo-yo dieting bullshit and it never works. I did the keto thing and I lost like 20 pounds in like two weeks and it came back like third week. I'm like, what the fuck? You yeah, know what I mean? It's, it's like, a fad yeah, it did, it did, it did not work and it's not good for long term. And so, you know, when I started looking at and I did, I did think about that when he said, dude, either want it or you don't. And I'm like, holy shit, he's so right. You know, like, and, and it's, it's worked for you. I mean, dude, how much weight have you lost? Probably like 25 pounds, you know, and then I fluctuate. Yeah, up and down five a day now. But but, but how tall are you? Five six. Okay, so I'm six six one. Twenty five pounds doesn't look like a lot on me, but on your frame, it looks like a lot. Yeah, dude, I was weighing like just over two hundred, and then um, I was down to like a one seventy four was my lowest, and I still got you know I still got a ways to go. But that picture you saw was pretty much a, a clip of the year, you know, all last year, twenty twenty. But back to 75 hard, just because I think this is important to mention yeah. if anyone looks into it. It's not it's not a physical program at all. It's mental. It's 100% a mental. And like Andy, who who started it, he'll say, like, dude, this has nothing. That, like, you're going to get physical results. But who you become mentally when you do this shit for 75 days in a row and you're you're keeping this promise that you made to yourself for 75 days in a row and you're not bullshitting. Like, you miss a picture, you got a stove, or, you know, you're, you're actually doing it. Um, your mental confidence grows, but also – you're way more efficient. You you know you don't waste time fucking around with bullshit. You know, um, so really it's 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 really it's like a life program. It's not like the physical part. Just kind of a side note, but just to mention that. So um, I think that's important to point that out. That is so true. And you're right. Like that was the one thing on the app. If you miss one thing, it starts all over. And yeah. I was like, oh, it started all over. And yeah, I was like, I miss, give up. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> and I stopped at that point. You know. Yeah. So there's there's 75 hard, which is a 75 days, and then you've got phase one which is all the 75 hard shit. And then you add in like a cold shower, um, three critical tasks and 10 minutes of visualizing. So now you're doing all of the shit that we talked about before. And now you're, you know, doing a cold shower, which sucks. And then all this other stuff. So it just kind of builds and builds and that's for 30 days. But I came up with that you either want it or you don't. Cause uh, I was on phase one, like in March, dude, when it's fucking snowing outside, you know, cold and, uh, Usually I would finish my last workout at like midnight, one in the morning because I'm more of a night guy. So I just got outside of, you know, teen, maybe 20 degree weather. Now I got to take this cold shower. And, dude, that would be my I would just stare at myself in the mirror, dude, and be like, motherfucker, you either want it or you don't. You yeah. know? Like and that's kind of where I came up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it hit me. It yeah. hit me. I was like, damn, <laughs> it's so right. It's so true, you yeah. know. Um, and, and I'm a, I'm a super early morning guy. So I think when you're going to bed, cause I see some of your posts at like two, three in the morning, yeah. I'm getting up and like, I'm up, it's dark outside and I love going out in the cold. And w- what I found when I'm doing like, and that has nothing to do with working out cause I'm usually walking, but I'll go walk and I'll, I'll do some meditation and I'll listen to some stuff. When I'm doing that, I'm like, my, my, my body is telling my mind, turn your ass around, go inside. What are you doing? Go, 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 turn around. And then I'm just like, no, I'm going to keep fighting it's your it. bitch voice. Yeah, until it yep. just turns off. And then it turns off eventually. And then I'm just like on, on cloud nine, you know, and I know I'm in pain. But once you pass that pain, like you get to this level where it's like you feel so high naturally. And I'm addicted to that. You know, and I find myself doing crazy things. Like I'll go I, like like two years ago, I hiked Bill, Bill's Canyon in the snow barefoot. You know, and that was insane. Yeah, when you told me that, I couldn't believe it. It's hour. insane. And and, and, and and the wife and I will go when it's like, you know, snowing. And I can't wait till we get our, our really good snow because, you know, I'll go barefoot and I'll do City Creek Canyon. Uh-huh. You know, and my feet are like frozen to the ground every step that I take because it's a paved path. 
but there's something going on mentally and it's like once you can get through this pain like you, you get to this level where your body's pushing out i don't know what it is but it's got to be some kind of chemical and you just feel so high and you feel like you can do anything and the confidence you get from yeah. that it's you can't get it from anything else you can't you got to push yourself through that pain um but i love doing stuff like that dude so i seen your videos two three in the morning walking in the snow you know and you're talking you're recording and i'm like that's so fucking motivating you know people take it for what it is yeah well when when you you know when when you're keeping that promise to yourself on the program but also when when you have your bitch voice you know sitting there telling you go back or don't do it or whatever and you overcome that there's you get this you get a self-respect is the best, best way to put it you have a new respect for yourself with mm -hmm. yourself and then i think there's a the physical part where the endorphins and shit kick in too um, so you probably know David Goggins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says, you know, when your mind tells you you're done, you're only at 40%. Mm. Know, yeah, I've, I've heard his books. His book. yeah, 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 yeah. I've listened to uh, that last one that the last one they put out. Can't hurt called? me. Can't hurt me. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one. That was a little too military for me, but I, it was cool though. You know, yeah. I still liked it. I got a lot from it. Um, I heard some of his messages right now actually when I was downstairs eating. Um, when he's running and he's talking to the camera, I got yeah. a story for you. you yeah, know. he's in, he's a little too intense for me. Uh -huh. um, but I saw him speak at one of the events I was at, and uh, that was one of the things that I remembered him saying is, you know, when your mind tells you you're done, you're you're really only at forty percent. Yeah, I well, like that. I'm gonna remember that. Yeah, that's a I good like, one. I like that. It's a good one. But it's like if you're at the gym, you know, you're trying to bench. Yeah. You're like, no, oh, I'm done. I'm done. Your mind is telling you you're done. Mm -hmm. But you push through. You do one more. You do another. Uh huh. One. Yeah, you stop counting, you just you go until counting. it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then there's just a focus on the next, you know, the next uh -huh. mile. Like if you're a marathon guy, the next mile or the next rep or just focus on small wins, you know, I just got to get to the next one and then the next and then the next. It's all in your head, huh? Yeah. All in yeah. your head. Yeah, dude, I think I love so. it. I love it. Yeah. Well, dude, I'm so happy that you came in. I talked to you about the whole fishing and combo thing. We got to plan a trip one day. I want to go out yeah. there. Take me to the ocean. Take my kid. He's been like trying to kill me. He's like, take me to the ocean and fish. And I'm like, I don't even know how to fish. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, dude. Cabo's awesome. We've been, uh, we we uh, we joined like not a timeshare thing, but we bought into a membership at a resort down there where you basically just get discounted pricing. But they've got a few different ones through Mexico. But I think Mexico is awesome. Yeah, 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 dude. We got to plan something soon. Yeah, no, you know let's I mean? do it. I'll, I'll go out there. Uh, we'll I, j I just came back from what uh, Cancun two three weeks ago. Oh really? Where just where were we at? What do you mean where? Were you in Cancun or just out of Cancun? Area? Oh nice. Yeah Cancun, and it was actually my first time in Mexico. I loved it. Oh dude, it's I'm awesome. Like, I can't wait to go back. Yeah. And so the water. anytime you want to go. Maybe okay. We'll, we'll do a combo thing. We'll probably hit some sort of a. I know. So a friend of mine, she did a long. It was like a two week uh, ceremony, and it was on this like secluded island. And it was a mixture of different plant medicines, and it was she was trying to go. I'm to the just trying to go her. fishing. Well, no, you got to go to yeah. this. You're the one that's need, needs to do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, she was trying to get over something that was really challenging, and she did it. And she went to this two week ceremony, and uh, she came back a whole different person. That's the dieta when when you go in for like a week or two weeks. That's yeah. what they call the dieta. Or uh, whatever. Okay, and you're like drinking juices and cleaning yourself I out. And I don't know. I haven't fucked around with it. That's a whole nother level of. Yeah, I'm not is. there yet. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. we're not even close yeah yeah well, we'll we'll plan some of it but dude i'm i'm so happy that you came in bro really like i'm super happy we we're able to meet and connect yeah hell yeah and uh hopefully we can do some business together you know later on and i know you and i since we're doing the coaching stuff we probably want to get into one of these mastermind groups you know maybe maybe join you on something because uh, i think that's super important you know yeah, bro, coaching in the masterminds is um it's hard to spend the money on it when you're first doing it but then when you start seeing you know and it's just, again, talking about the energy and the things lining up. Like, you're doing your part. You're investing in yourself. You're throwing your money where your mouth is. And stuff just starts happening. So, I mean, I think, I mean, you know, all, all of us have a coach right now, you know. Like, yeah. whether it's a coach in real estate, a coach in spiritual stuff and, and business and health, whatever it is. Um, I just think all of that's the, the key to getting to another level. Yeah. You got to pay to play. Yeah. Yeah. You got to pay to play. Awesome. Well, let's wrap this up. I know you got somewhere to go. You and I got somewhere, somewhere to go and a lot a lot of stuff to do right now. <laughs> I mean, freaking today's what, th Thursday? Yep. It's, the week's not nowhere near over. We got a shitload of stuff to do. But, dude, thanks thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Uh, let, let's plan this again sometime in the near future. No, I'd love to, and I appreciate you guys uh, having me on and stoked to see what you guys are doing with uh, Uvo. Uvo? How do you Uvo. say it? UVO. UVO. Utah's very own. UVO, <laughs> yeah. No, you guys are making moves. It's exciting to see. Congrats on the car. Thank you, man. Appreciate you know, that. And, uh, keep kicking ass. There we go. Awesome, guys. Kate, we will see you guys on the next one.
I need to know everything Who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying But I like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche